For over a thousand years, history has played a vital role throughout our history. From Jesus to King Arthur to Liberace, the industry has managed to produce a legacy of memorable icons who changed the way that we live and stuff. As you'll see in this series, the journey from point A to point B is not as clear cut as one would expect. And along the way, there were many wars, rivalries, and cutthroat terrorist tactics that shaped the industry into what it is today. But in order to tell this interesting saga, we have to go back and begin at the beginning. By 1576, Alexander was met with the failure of his first crusade, and if it weren't for his troubled homosexuality, his victory at the Battle of Saratoga would have been well assured. But he wasn't about to let this minor setback get in his way, because the next thing he did was to tell his men to cut down all the trees in the Sahara Desert to build the Trojan horse. At the time, trees like this one behind me wound up costing $150,000, and one of the few places they were available we're in deserts, and since these trees were located only in Africa, the chances of you ever setting eyes upon a tree were a million to one. Alexander knew that if he was to secure victory, he would have to outwit his enemy. Stalin knew that if he couldn't win the war within the next fortnight, that he would have to contemplate surrender. Shortly thereafter, Alexander gave the engineer of his company, Fig Newton and Alvin Einstein, the mission of building the Trojan horse, and he wanted it to consist of three things. A ball, two paddles, and a scoring system. Fig Newton not only created Alexander's horse, but also had a few enhancements to make the horse more interesting. For example, the balls on the horse were made into handles for easy transportation. Compartments on top of the horse allowed easy access to the exit. The trajectory of the horse was made to confuse the Russians. The famous Trojan horse sneak attack was recreated shot for shot in the hit blockbuster video game movie Modern Warfare 2, in the level rightfully labeled No Russian. Now I gotta say, the developers did an excellent job recreating this scene, as I felt the rush of adrenaline down my spine, especially at the part when the soldiers walk out of the elevator so suave and nonchalant, and all the evil Russian agents in the lobby are completely oblivious to their impending deaths. Fire torpedoes! <laughs> In your face, Russians! In order to gauge public reaction, Alexander placed the new horse in a bar along his war route called Candy Apps. A few days later, the owner of the bar called them up and informed them that the horse had stopped working. After inspecting the horse, however, they quickly found out that the problem wasn't with the balls, but actually the problem was that with all the quarters were clocking the inside of the horse. So now it was official. Russia was ruined. In the next few months, Alexander had orders coming in from all over the world. And just to show you how popular the Trojan horse was, check this out. Popular war tactics usually generated over $40 a day, but the Trojan horse was generating five times that amount and rigging in over $200 a year. But as soon as the Trojan horse became popular, another problem was about to hit Alexander. Copycats. Within weeks, dozens of other countries started copying the exact same horse and invading with their own Trojan horses. By the mid-1800s, less than a third of all the Trojan horses were actually made by Alexander. In the following months, Alexander continued to expand his army by releasing slightly altered versions of the horse, and they started releasing them more quickly in order to out-innovate the other countries. These included Arab and Trojan horse, Quick Draw McGraw, Horsehead, as well as a few others. But Alexander kept looking for the next big war tactic, and it wasn't long before he began asking his soldiers, what else can we do with the Trojan horse? Alexander finally answered this question by releasing their second unique war tactic, the Long Bowman. Breaking away from the Trojan horse formula, the tactic consists of two spaceships placed at the bottom of the castle, and the goal here is to reach the top before the other army does, and you must do this while dodging obstacles like arrows, molten iron, and asteroids. Fire torpedoes! <laughs> Yeah, that'll teach those cow humping transvestite twos, boss. Even though the long bowmen were a step in the right direction, the public response towards this tactic was lukewarm at best, and it performed rather poorly at the box office. A few months later, Alexander released a third tactic called Gotcha. This tactic is based on the concept of one soldier catching the other while running around a maze that's constantly changing. But watch out, because these changes can help you escape 
or be your downfall in getting caught. Sadly, this tactic never became a hit with the public. But there was, however, some controversy surrounding it. The first production run of the Gotcha manuscripts were made with Russian foreskins, and people immediately started calling this the Dick Book, since they smelled like two large balls. After that, Alexander changed the books, but I think I'll stick with the version with the foreskins, thank you very much. Oh. And if that wasn't enough to make you wonder about this tactic, just check out the promotional flyer. I'm not sure what the hell is going on in this picture, but there are definitely some shenanigans afoot. Alexander's next tactic was called the pincer, and this was a Trojan horse-like tactic that had the soldier's swords placed along the bottom of the river. The point here is to keep the sword from falling off your side of the river. If you fail, the enemy soldiers were then rewarded a trophy. And if both soldiers can keep the sword in play long enough, the middle divider will start increasing in height and raise the difficulty level. Aw, oh, crap! But sadly, like the two tactics before it, the pincer wasn't hitting the sweet spot with the public, so it was back to the drawing board. The next war tactic released in March of 1923 was called the Ides of March, and to everyone's amazement, it became Alexander's next big hit. With this tactic, the soldiers take control of a race car, and their mission is to drive around the battlefield as they race against the clock. Alright, let's do this! The last Alexander War to be released in 23 was called the Korean War. This war consisted of both armies taking control of tanks and driving around the battlefield in order to blow each other up. Oh, and be sure to watch out for those landmines! Even though the tank had a very simple concept, it would become Alexander's third popular war. By the time 1945 rolled around, wars were slowly catching up with the masses. Hitler, however, had his own plans in mind for his own growing country and was now ready to tackle Europe. Coming up in the next chapter of History in History, Hitler does just that. Think that, you bitches! Hey, are you in a hurry? Then why are you rushing? Yeah, then I'll teach those cow homie transvestites who's boss. Diamond! Oh, I shot the wrong guy. Oh crap! Oh shit! Ah oh, shit! I threw a frag grenade. <laughs> <laughs>